Hey folks, welcome back to the greenhouse. Just taking a look at some of the watermelons. See, it's a variety called Catania. And this guy is pretty much ready, I would say. And then that one will be next. And then quite recently it set this one. Oh, and this one here as well, apparently. So yeah, continuing harvest from just this little area here. You can see we have the vines spiraling around. That's a good way to kind of manage them. And uh, we were just uh, doing some trimming here of the inner fan leaves, stripping them out to get some airflow. As I said in the previous video, these two over here are done, and I was just working on these two in the corner from our spring harvested plants that we revegged. So yeah, still a lot to go, hundreds of these to take out. But we think it would be worth it, some proactive action here to keep us from having to spray anything to control PM, which we still haven't gotten in the greenhouse yet, on the cannabis that is. And tomatoes still doing quite good, quite well. And send fruit, you can see all the way to the top, basically. And the sweet potato, which is three plants here from down here all the way to that point. And we constantly trim these back, feed them to the chickens, and use them as mulch for direct in situ composting. Which is our preferred method of dealing with green residues. Either feed it to the chickens or just compost it in place. Like you can see all of the stuff down there. Uh, I can see uh, pea, pea vines and uh, leaves, cannabis leaves obviously. There's some carrot uh, leaves coming off the carrots growing over there on top of the wood chips that we put down earlier in the year. And so I wanted to talk about why it is that we use wood chips here in the garden, why we kind of make a big deal about a deep layer of mulch constantly protecting the soil. So you can see even the areas that aren't really cultivated, they're still mulched over to, co to prevent those areas from sucking up water from the mulched areas. And so that's the one of the major efforts, as we spoke in the previous videos, is that it, mulch really helps us to go along with this zero input system. And so by having a thick layer of mulch, it maintains the moisture that is already in the soil below it. Furthermore, it keeps the soil underneath of it cool by acting as a protective layer which allows for the soil food web to build even faster because it has more pleasant conditions down there and it's protected from the UV. And since this is a system that's kind of cut off from nature because of the roof of the greenhouse so we don't get rain and because of the plastic so we don't get UV actually coming in so that is something actually to potentially consider as lacking in a greenhouse grow the UV radiation, which can be important for plants. But uh, the way we protect the soil from the UV is just by using mulch. And um, when you have a temperature difference between the top of the mulch and the bottom where the soil is, what eventually starts to happen is that you get this process called dry watering. And that happens because of when the dew point changes twice a day, Due to the difference in temperature, the cooler soil down there will basically condense water out. Just like when you take a cold beer out of the fridge on a hot day, water will start to form on the surface of that colder object. And so if you have a nice, loose, porous root, 
uh, soil structure and there's possibility for air to easily get down in there you will have this dry watering process that actually naturally feeds water from the air so that's pretty cool and uh, on top of that if uh, this was exposed to water whenever it would rain it would basically leach out a compost tea like stuff that would feed the plants below the mulch and it's important to remember that mulch is just a protective layer it is not the soil itself soil is an interaction between living roots microbes fungi and all the other components of the soil food web so let's just take a look down here between the melon and the sweet potato. Uh, you can see uh, nine months ago, this was pretty much all like this, rough stuff, but it quickly decomposed uh, thanks to the action of uh, the chickens and the other poultry we had in here and the Kingstropharia mushroom that we inoculated in the soil. And it, so it decomposes to this very fine, very high quality compost material. And so if we were watering this, it would leach out some of that compost tea. But uh, it's really not necessary because plants can access that anyway, again, with the uh, condensation water and uh, thanks to the other components of the soil food web breaking it down for them. Remember, the true way to feed your plants is by feeding the soil food web. The real way that the plants get their nutrition is through the exudates that the bacteria and the fungi release in their interaction with the roots which are pumping sugars, carbs, and proteins down from the leaves. So it's that exchange that really makes soil. You can see here after we stripped this plant we left the leaves which by the way had no problems on them whatsoever. They were really clean and good looking. Uh, but we just wanted to go ahead and give this guy a bit more airflow. You can see it filled it up already in just one day, basically. You can hardly tell we took anything off. And we remulched it with some uh, leaf mold we had lying around. And so right now we're out of wood chips. And uh, the way that most people acquire wood chips is by contacting local landscaping services. And basically it's a pretty good relationship because you're doing them a service by allowing them to dump it at your site, which prevents them from having to dump it at the landfill, which not only costs them money, but obviously isn't a good thing in terms of pollution and stuff like that. When you're burying so much organic matter in a landfill that tends to decay anaerobically, and for methane and all sorts of other issues. Uh, so you're really doing them an issue and they're saving money if it's convenient for them to drop it off. And you're getting a great mulching material. And by wood chips, I want to be clear, it's kind of like the outer part of a tree mulch uh, chipped up. So you have large pieces of the trunk that, that have been uh, mulched to smaller size. You have small branches, you have bark, and you have lots of leaves as well mixed up in all of that. So it's not just bark chip, which is much different. This is uh, most parts of a tree mixed together, and it's really that difference in particle size that makes it so great. The bigger pieces allow you to have support so you can easily walk on it without really damaging the soil too much below. And the smaller pieces break down quickly and uh, give like an instant feed to your soil. On top of that, utilizing the wood chips, we're going to get another harvest out of this greenhouse. And that's the Kingstropharia mushroom, which we already got a small harvest of in the spring. And hopefully another one here in the fall. I'm not sure how it will go in the greenhouse, cut off from the rain, but we have it inoculated outside as well. And so yeah, uh, if you're interested in finding out more about these deep mulching methods, I would recommend you look into the work of Ruth Stout, S-T-O-U-T, and find out more about that. If you're interested in general about this type of do-nothing farming, 
That work really was pioneered by Masanobu Fukuoka, and I would highly recommend you check out his really a revolutionary and epic book called One Straw Revolution. It's a great influence on our work here. And uh, while we're name dropping people, uh, go ahead and stick Sepp Holzer in the mix, my favorite permaculturalist by far. Uh, you can check out uh, well all three of their work on here, right here on YouTube. Uh, Seb Holzer and his work at the Krematerhof and uh, his work on um, regenerating landscapes, uh, reforesting landscapes, and doing it by managing water. It's really the most important variable and input we have to consider in these systems and why we really like a deep cover of wood chips everywhere. And so we'd recommend that you go out and try to get some mulch. It doesn't really matter what it is. It doesn't have to be wood chips. And pile it on now. Great time to do it in Oregon before the really heavy rains start. You'll get the full benefit of it breaking down over winter. Or if you're watching this later, it's never too late to put some on. And we'd highly recommend it for any greenhouse cannabis grow or outdoor cannabis grow. Whether you're growing directly in the ground or in smart pot type situation, mulch the top of your pot, mulch in between the pots most importantly. All that dry exposed area will basically suck up all the moisture out of your pots. And mulch it thick. I would bet if people did it like this around their smart pots at, at the end of the season, the fall, they would find that a lot of the roots went from the smart pots into the mulch which is actually how we got on this whole system uh, in the first place is that we were finding at the end of the season when we used to have raised beds that the tomatoes you can see here which are really heavy feeders they would send out the roots into the paths between the raised beds which were mulched in wood chips and really thrive on the moisture and the nutrition that lived in there and that motivated us to get rid of the raised beds and wood chip everything make everything a planting area while allowing us to walk everywhere as well. So many functions stacked into our humble little wood chips. So that's our rant for today. Let me just quickly show you our watermelon, which is still somehow growing. Uh, here's uh, leftovers of the melons. This is a Russian variety that I got the seeds from directly. They're getting close and hopefully they'll make it before the PM completely takes them out. You can see that there. The last thing I want to show you are these eggplants, which is that round variety I showed you earlier. Really good and tasty and minimal seeds. And our big boy over here. Really nice and warm, soaking up the sun. Still doing great on the foliage, so we're going to let them go. And there's a couple more different types of watermelons here. This weird shaped one here. The last thing I want to show you is the ginger. It seems to be slowing down, but it's still producing new shoots, which you can see right here and here. And it, as this does this, it basically splits off a bit, a new piece of the rhizome, and that shoots up. So every time it extends out, the rhizome gets bigger, 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 bigger. So that's good. Initially this was just one shoot from the little piece of the rhizome we planted. It was just a piece that we bought in the store. You can see the same thing going on here. And if we dig down, we might be able to yeah, just see the barely the top of that rhizome forming. 
see that the rest of it going out that way. but for a good harvest off that as well. Oh my gosh. Look at this. We've been trying to get one of these on camera for the thumbnail for one of our videos for a while now. And look where, where we spotted them. It's a praying mantis molting out of its shell you can see on top there with the legs attached to the leaf and it's hanging down we're trying to get its large arms out of that old exoskeleton and this is this kind of brown smaller variety we commonly see around here we have the larger green one as well maybe somebody knows what the variety actually is and can tell us but there he is coming out let's just prove that he is alive are you alive? Oh yeah. Very much alive. I don't want to mess with him too much. He's probably in a weakened state right now. Awesome. That's what happens when you maintain a constant ground cover. It grows the prey species for these plants or for these uh, prey mantises and allows a place for them to hide and reproduce as well. And obviously having lots of plants around is very important as well. Oh, I, I keep on saying one more thing, but this is really the last one. First, you got some or oregano here, which we love, obviously. And here's a new addition back here next to the um, water barrels. We took an old pot that somebody was throwing away, and this one's a pretty deep one, about 14 inches deep, about 10 across. And we slick on up the uh, holes on the bottom and put in some water lettuce there. So like a micro, a nano pond almost. There's some rocks at the bottom, and we've done this before with the water hyacinths, and it worked really well. And the uh, algae and the plants basically oxygenate the water on their own. It doesn't go stale and once they take over, back to, uh, mosquitoes don't even bother really. There won't be enough space once all these multiply. So with that, and these uh, ripening up cucumbers that we're saving for seed. So keep on growing.